library for inviting. Whoop, we got it. Recording in progress. Um, so yes, thank you so much for inviting us once again. And I am Carolyn Viegas. I am the community relations manager for Long Island Community Hospital. And I just wanted to give a couple of reminders about a few things that we have um, at the hospital. Right now, we have a vaccine clinic going on tomorrow morning, October 1st, from 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. It's a walk-in. Um, you don't have to go through the entire hospital. There are signs to get you around back. So if you are still needing your vaccine, they are available. It's the Moderna vaccine. So that is on our vaccine clinic. Uh, we have a breast health program coming up with the Sable Library, Dr. Testa. Jane Tester will be our speaker that evening, and that's October 26th at 7 p.m. So we're looking forward to that with Sable Library again. And for everyone out there, if you want to keep up on what is happening at the hospital, you can visit our website or go to our Facebook page, Long Island Community Hospital, and you'll find upcoming events. You'll find out what's new, what's going on. Visit the website and you'll find out some of our services that we offer there and also see what's new, um, what's happening, our new physicians. Um, we are in the process of an affiliation with NYU. It's very exciting, NYU Langone, and that is moving forward. And we are excited about all the possibilities that that is going to bring to our community. Um, we're at least at the phase of um, having people look at our hospital inside to see what they can uh, elevate us to. And coming January, they'll become our parent, as you would. Um, so we'll, we'll start moving into the NYU Langone family. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Rachel Valente. She is our intern at the Hospital on Nutrition. And Jessica is somewhere on my screens. <laughs> Jessica Shrek, who is our interim director of uh, food services and nutritional. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over. I guess, Rachel, are you gonna start or Jessica? So Rachel's gonna take the lead and I'm just here for support, but as you know, she does a fabulous job. And if any other questions come up, I'm happy to answer them. Um, we're happy to help. We are a you know, nutrition registered dietitians. Rachel will be a registered dietitian in a few months. Um, and we offer both inpatient and outpatient. And we'll go through some of the nutrition related resources we have at the end of the program. But I will let Rachel take the lead. Great. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Um, the slideshow thing always gets me confused. Okay. Can everyone see it? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So um, as Carolyn and Jessica already kind of touched on, I am a diet clerk and a dietetic intern at the hospital. So I'm hoping to share some of my knowledge with you today, especially on the Mediterranean diet. So if you have any questions at any time or we have them reserved for the end, feel free to ask. Um, so let's get started. So the Mediterranean diet is the diet that's followed by the people living around the Mediterranean Sea. It's mainly inspired by Greece, Italy, and Spain, which we were kind of talking about before. Um, yeah, and so they have an abundance of olives and grapes, as <laughs> we're going to get into later, which is why olive oil is such a staple and also a little bit of wine, which is fun. So with the overview, we have about eight major components to the Mediterranean diet. The first one being plant-based foods. Um, so that would be our fruits, our vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts and seeds. And then olive oil is gonna be our staple fat and low fat dairy and moderate consumption, as well as fish and poultry about two times per week, red meat sparingly, herbs and spices instead of salt, red wine, everyone's favorite, and exercise. So I liked this little um, diagram, which was kind of like my pyramid, which was the old my plate, um, because it's showing at the bottom what we would consume on a daily level, even multiple times per day. So we're seeing you know, physical activity, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and then in the middle, it's what we're consuming daily, but in moderate amounts. So it's the olive oil, the fish, 
our yogurt, like the dairy products um, and poultry. And then at the top, it's what we consume in small amounts, but really in moderation. So it's our meats and our sweets. So the first principle, like I talked about before, was that emphasis on plant-based foods. So as I also said before, that's our fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, and beans. So they're typically, um, for a dessert, they're typically consuming fruit as opposed to those sweets. But like I had mentioned beforehand, it's everything in moderation. Five nights out of the week, you have your fruit and maybe on that Saturday, you have your, your piece of cake or whatever you were craving. Um, and the really great thing about the fruits and vegetables and the whole greens is fiber and antioxidants. So we're gonna find most of those when we're talking about fruits and vegetables in the skin. So that's why it's important that, you know, if we're having an apple, maybe not to cut off the skin, leave the skin there. Um, and then with our whole grains, we want whole grains instead of white. So, you know, brown rice, whole wheat pasta, whole wheat bread, as opposed to white bread and, you know, regular pasta, because that's where we're gonna see the spike in our blood sugar, because it's there's nothing that we need to break down in order to digest it. So that's where those spikes are coming from, as opposed to the fiber, which is present in the skin of our fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, that it takes our body a little bit longer to um, digest. So we're not seeing crazy spikes in blood sugar. It's also helping us keep, uh, feel full for longer because it's taking longer to break down, which is helping um, also lose weight because you're probably going to eat less if you're feeling full for a longer period of time. It also will help decrease constipation, which is super important as long as we're drinking an adequate amount of water. Um, and because of what I was talking about before with it not it's maintaining blood sugar and not spiking it, we're going to see um, prevention of diabetes because really diabetes um, stems from crazy ups and lows within the blood sugar. And then also something that I forgot to men, uh, put on the slide is fiber also helps decrease our cholesterol levels in our blood. So that's going to help aid in preventing um, cardiovascular disease. And then the antioxidants as well that are present in our fruits and vegetables kind of go through the blood, find all that loose cholesterol and get rid of it so that it doesn't clog up our arteries and cause that heart disease. So then olive oil is the main fat source. So we know here in America, our primary fat source is probably butter. Most people are cooking their meats or really anything in butter as opposed to olive oil. Whereas over there, olive, olives are very abundant and they use olive oil for pretty much everything. <laughs> um, so the, the major difference is butter contains saturated fat and saturated fat is also known as bad fat because saturated fat is what elevates our cholesterol levels. There's like kind of a misconception that it's mainly dietary cholesterol, which you find in egg yolks, which I'm sure you may have heard to avoid egg yolks. And while that does contribute a tiny amount, the main culprit is our saturated fat. So saturated fat is really what, um, leads to that buildup of cholesterol in our blood, and then eventually the plaque builds up in the vessels, which leads to cardiovascular disease. So olive oil, on the other hand, has monounsaturated fat, and that helps lower our bad cholesterol, get rid of the hanging out cholesterol in the blood, and maintain the good cholesterol. Um, so I know that this gets confusing for a lot of people, especially when the doctor starts throwing around LDL, HDL, v, LDL, like all the different. Um, LDL, an easy way to remember it, is the bad one. L for lousy. HDL is the good one. H for happy. So we're going to get rid of that LDL and we're going to maintain our HDLs. And then they have a daily consumption of low-fat dairy. And as you're gonna see a recurring theme here, the low fat dairy is so important because the fat found in dairy is a saturated fat. So while um, our dairy products like milk, cheese, and yogurt are so important for our bones because it provides us with calcium, which we need, um, keeps our bones strong, prevents injury, fracturing, um, 
And unfortunately, as we get older, we tend to turn over our calcium a little bit more. So we wanna make sure that we're getting it in the diet, but it's important that when we are getting it, we're making that choice for a lower um, fat content in our dairy products. So I know if you're like drinking whole milk, it's very, very difficult to just switch over to skim. It's like water. So it's important, not important, but a good thing to try is to, you know, move down to 2%, kind of get used to it and make your way down in increments. And even if you can just go from whole milk to 2%, it makes a big difference in your diet on what you're consuming. So it's just, you know, making the little steps for changes. So then we have moderate consumption of fish and poultry. As far as poultry goes, we all pretty much in America eat chicken on a regular basis. It's definitely not something that we would have to work towards. Um, as for fish, some people love it. Some people hate it. <laughs> some people haven't really tried it or scared of it. Um, I would encourage trying it if you have not. If I'll get into it later, but um, so fish, especially like our fatty fish, the fat in our fatty fish is not bad, uh, bad fat. It's actually polyunsaturated fat, which is where we get omega-3 from, which I'm sure everybody has heard of in some form or another. Um, so omega-3s are anti-inflammatory and help to get rid of all of that um, cholesterol hanging out in the blood. So they reduce the risk of heart disease and they even are shown to help with cognitive decline that keep uh, your memory a little bit better and sharper. Um, so with that being said, what I was going to say, if you don't, if you're not willing to try fish, maybe an omega-3 supplement is something that you'd be more open to. Um, but it is recommended, especially because around the Mediterranean Sea, you know, we have, they also have an abundance of fish. So it is recommended to consume fish at least two times per week. Um, even if you do one time per week, like I said, it's something. Um, and of course our chicken and our fish provide us with protein, which is so important for maintaining our muscles and also our immunity, which we all need, especially during these times. Um, and then red meat sparingly. So this is something in America that may be not um, so common. People do tend to eat red meat on a regular basis. And it's not that we want to totally avoid it altogether because it is important for iron. And we want to make sure that we are consuming iron in our diet because that's what keeps our blood levels up. Um, but red meat contains saturated fat. So it's important that when we're choosing our red meat, we're going to go for leaner cuts or if it's ground beef, you want to aim for like 90% lean meat or higher if you can find. Um, so I provided this little guide, which I thought was useful. Um, so our skirt steak, our ribeye and T-bone are higher in fat, as you can see. So they're going to contain more of that saturated fat. So for a healthier choice, we may go for um, a sirloin, a strip steak, or an eye of round. And it's recommended that we consume um, red meat only a few times per, per month. So maybe say twice per month, um, less than one time per week, but a couple times per month. And then our herbs and spices. So we wanna replace salt with herbs and spices. And this is so important because especially over here, we have a lot of processed food. And unfortunately, our processed food is high in salt and sugar. Um, and salt, a lot of salt in the diet does tend to lead to high blood pressure, which overall leads to heart disease. So we want to try to replace our salt with herbs and spices because we don't want our food to be bland because we're cutting out salt. We want it still to be delicious and taste good. And there's so many different spices out there. Um, you know, if you're willing to try, like try something that you've never had before. So I've, I put down garlic, rosemary, onion, and roasted red pepper. And then I put this little diagram with different ones. There was like paprika, turmeric, which is really good for um, anti-inflammation as well. Um, they also have Mrs. Dash seasoning, which we actually give to people in the hospital that are on a sodium restriction. 
And that's good too. You don't have to have a, you don't have to already have cardiovascular disease to be using that. Um, it's of spices and it's something um, that a lot of people really do like and use instead of salt. So if you haven't tried it, I do recommend trying it. And then of course, regular exercise. So this is some people's favorite, some people's least favorite. Um, so it's recommended to do 30 minutes of exercise three to five times per week. Um, it improves your digestion, your mood, your sleep, overall just better quality of life. And it helps prevent cardiovascular disease and diabetes because it helps you maintain more muscle on your body as opposed to fat. And it also can help you lose weight. So that's where we're getting um, our preventatives from. But the key to it really is just finding something you like. There's so many different components to exercise. The way it looks to me may look different to you. What I love may be different from what you love, you know, whether it be after dinner taking your dog for a walk around the block or doing yoga classes, weightlifting if you want to go to the gym and weightlift, riding your bike around the block, riding a stationary bike at home and watching your favorite TV show. You just have to find what works for you and what keeps you motivated that you feel you could keep doing it. And then lastly, everyone's favorite component, <laughs> moderate consumption of red wine. So typically in the Mediterranean, as we were talking about before, they um, consume about a glass of wine with dinner, red wine specifically, and that's a six ounce glass. So it's not anything crazy. It's not one of those big, but it's just a little bit. Um, and the reason for this is because it, it contains antioxidants. They're called, excuse me if I butcher this, Revestrol, it's found in the skin of the grape. And so, um, like I spoke about before, the antioxidants kind of scour through your blood and find that cholesterol that's hanging out and help to get rid of it. So that's what it's doing. Um, it is said that it's actually better if you consume it from the grape itself, as opposed to when that skin is all broken down to make the wine, but that's much less fun. Um, so we'll go with that. Um, but because we're getting rid of the cholesterol, of course, we're preventing against heart disease. And then these are some recipes that I have provided. I don't know if they were sent out to you before or if they'll be sent out after. Um, but as you can see, we have salmon. So we have our fish that we'd be consuming, should be consuming, aiming to consume about two times per week with the greens. So, and um, the chickpeas, which are beans. So those are gonna provide us with our fiber and our antioxidant. And then um, we have stuffed mushrooms. So they're actually vegetarian. You can see there's a little bit of olive oil drizzled on them. Um, and they're just containing a ton of fruits and vegetables, not, not fruits, but vegetables. And um, I believe that they're also stuffed with the hummus. Oh yeah, they are hummus. So um, the beans again for the fiber and antioxidants. And then here are some resources that we have at the hospital. We have Maria Cruccio, who is a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator. So um, that's her phone number if anybody has any questions specifically pertaining to diabetes. And then I also provided you guys with our cardiac rehab phone number as well. So that would be for anything regarding heart disease. And I'm gonna leave this up for a second so you can write that down. <laughs> I'm just gonna to add to that on Maria Curcio's number, anyone who feels um, their doctor is telling them they're borderline, they are running classes for preventative. So you can reach out to Maria and there are classes that will help you to prevent getting full-blown diabetes. So you might wanna look into that as well. Is there a charge for the classes? No, they're evidence-based too. So it's actually like a nationwide initiative, especially the New York State Department of Health is really, really um, supportive of this endeavor. It's called the National Diabetes, it's just like diabetes prevention and it's evidence-based. Um, it's, you know, very comprehensive and it just helps prevent it. it. As we know in healthcare, we want to be proactive to preventing things, not reactive. Um, so 
you know, we always encourage anyone that has any questions or even if they have a strong family history of type two diabetes, just to reach out and, and get the people who are the experts in it. She's a certified diabetes educator as of myself, um, which is a credential that allows us to focus on empowering patients to help make their own health choices, um, healthy eating, you know, foot care, eye care, things, conversations to have with your doctor. Um, so it's a really excellent program. And the cardiac rehab program also helps support people that have had cardiovascular events that may have landed them in the hospital. And that is obviously an exercise-based approach in controlled settings um, with certified clinical exercise physiologists and certain dietitian, registered dietitians on my team also help support any of those um, cardiac rehab patients that want to really work on their nutrition aspect of, of their cardiovascular disease and how to help you know, menu plan, grocery shop, um, as Rachel said, recipes. So um, we have a team of, you know, amazing registered dietitians on kind of all different specialties at Long Island Community Hospital that are able to help me, help you, educate you and empower you to make your own health goals. So we're here to help and, and we love talking about food as you could see. Um, so if anybody ever has any questions, um, you can always reach out to any one of our team members and we'll make sure we get good information for you. So does anyone have any questions about the Mediterranean diet for Rachel? Um, that's what we were leading into. <laughs> and you know what I will do uh, if you want, I'm going to take a look at my participants list and I'll ask to all to unmute so this way we can interact. Yeah. Very and people can use the chat feature too. I'm pretty Zoom savvy at this point. Um, so if they're more comfortable doing, you know, the chat feature, I'll keep an eye on that for Rachel and I hope to answer questions. And Rachel, maybe you can talk a little bit too about the uh, ingredients on a box and what to look for and what not to look for specifically. Yeah. So as I was talking about before, um, the two major um, ingredients that we will we'll see high, especially in our processed foods, really are sodium, which is our salt, and sugar. You want to look not only for just total sugar, but also added sugar. So added sugar is what they put in after the snack that's not already present in the ingredients that they provided. Okay. So I do see a question on the chat. Um, so I'll jump right in and answer that. So Jenna had asked if farm-raised fish are okay. So there is some research saying that the omega levels might not be as high as, as wild caught. However, it's what works for you. This, if, if budget is a concern and farm-raised fish is available to you more easily and cost-effective than wild caught, it's still going to be beneficial to your diet. Same with produce. So if you're shopping on a budget or you're working on, you know, you're, you're being conscious yeah, of yeah. your food costs, um, you know, you could buy frozen vegetables on sale yeah. as opposed to fresh. If you even have to do canned, that's okay. You just want to mute your canned. Uh, I mean, you, you, you hear background noises. You just want to rinse your canned vegetables. So, um, as long as you're getting that those balanced sort of key variety of foods that Rachel went over, whatever that looks like, there's ways and tricks to kind of make it healthy. So, um, farm raised is perfectly okay, especially because it is probably cost friendly and more available. Uh, another question we have is, how do you know if something has too much salt? or fat. So we're just kind of over that you want to look at the food labels. So when you're grocery shopping, you kind of have to be like a detective. They definitely don't make it easy for you. I always say the bread aisle is super overwhelming when you go shopping. There's like 300 different brands and whole grain and, and multi-grain and oat grain and, and, you know, everything you can imagine. So that's where that food label is really going to be helpful to you because you're going to compare um, products. And that's where you're going to look at something has um, salt, fat, and I'll say the percentage of the daily value. So the daily values are based on just the average American. So if you do have a specific health condition, that might be something you want to speak to your provider. Maybe you need even less sodium or more sodium or really be cautious with your saturated fat. But these are generally over, overall guidelines for the average person. So that food label is going to be really, really helpful um, in helping you pick better products. 
So um, another question is how do I make my meal my meals healthier by adding more fruits and vegetables to my meals, um, oatmeal, eggs, snacks, any suggestions? So, you know, anytime you could add it in, um, the better oatmeal you could, instead of, you know, buying sweetened oatmeal, you could do the overnight oats. There's so many amazing recipes. Um, and adding fruits to that is going to be a sweetener as opposed to, you know, um, buying the packaged oatmeal that come with sugar in it. So by adding fresh fruits or even frozen berries, you can go to Costco and get a bag of frozen berries and mix yeah. that in with oatmeal and it, it's going to taste delicious and it's going to give you flavor. Um, you also could add, you know, spinach, any vegetables to your eggs. So pretty much well, she went over the, the pyramid, the Mediterranean period. If you look at the my plate, which is sort of newer, I'm going to date myself. It was my pyramid. It when was, I was my pyramid. Yes. <laughs> I That was what I initially learned before I went to school for nutrition. But like what they would teach when I was younger was my pyramid. But yeah, now so it's my plate. Half your plate of fruit and vegetable. So really anytime you're adding it, you just got to get, get the majority of it in there. All right, so I'm gonna shoot some questions over to you then Rachel, we'll, we'll take turns. Okay. So what are your, um, oh, sorry, there's a bunch of them. So how long does it take to lower bad cholesterol on this diet? I think it's recommended for cholesterol levels to be taken every three months, right? Yeah, so, it, you know, this diet, there's a lot of factors on how the Mediterranean diet will help you specifically, but, um, if you're really cutting back on that saturated fat, which is again, the, the biggest um, culprit of high cholesterol, which the Mediterranean diet encompasses. If you look, it's not really heavy with the red meats and the things, it should lower it over time. Um, so there's a lot of different factors, but it, your doctor will check your, your levels regularly and you definitely wanna make sure you're proactive and keeping up with those appointments. Um, okay, so Rachel, what, what, what do you think about salt substitutes? or garlic powder is, which is better? So I haven't looked, but I think garlic powder is fine as long as there's no sodium in it. But that's, it's important, like we were talking about before to always just like check the food label because sometimes you will find some mixed stuff and there could be um, salt in there. Um, but anything really is fine aside from the salt. It's really the salt that's going to elevate our blood okay. pressure. And the salt substitutes, you just want to be careful if you have any like kidney issues, because those could be yep. potassium based. So again, um, if you have a lot of um, health conditions, you just want to make sure you communicate that with your doctor or registered dietitian that's familiar with your particular um, health conditions. And the salt substitutes work for a lot of people, but they do are usually potassium based. So if you are having concerns with your kidneys, that might not be the best option for you. But the Mrs. Dash, the garlic powder, those herbs, those spices, those work for almost everybody. So um, that's why we say you want to add that flavor with those instead of the sodium. Uh, okay, so what is your opinion on alternate milks like almond, oat milk? Um, they noticed that they have very long ingredient lists. I think um, the first most important thing is you want to make sure that whatever milk you are consuming that's plant-based is fortified with calcium and vitamin D because that you're mainly going to be getting that from your dairy products. So if you're swapping those out, um, for an alternative, a plant-based alternative, you're not going to be getting those because they don't naturally have them occurring in abundant amount. Um, so that's the first most important. As far as the long ingredient list, I think other than that, it's it's been found to be okay. Um, Jess, so you maybe have more so yeah, you just want to read the ad. Again, that's where that food label is going to be the biggest helper for you. Um, just because it's almond milk, if it's sweetened almond milk, you you know, it's not necessarily healthy if it's adding, you know, sugar, okay. added sugars to yeah. it. Um, you know, most of the milk substitute milk alternatives are healthy um, for various reasons, depending on what your specific nutrition needs are. The only time that I always say, you know, you want to run it by your doctor if you're talking about children, because they do need some of the fat that we do find in cow's milk, but there's still plenty of other alternatives. There's key protein milk, hemp milk. Um, again, there's so many alternatives. Um, and so if, if, you are very concerned about your saturated fats, switching that out with it, like an unsweetened almond milk would be a very healthy alternative to add. Um, 
but you just got to read those food labels and make sure they're not adding uh, so many other things to it that you don't want like the sodium or the sugar. Um, so does the mended hearts group still meet there? Um, I don't know, Carolyn, you might have a, an answer for that. No, unfortunately not. I believe Stony Brook still has a division or a chapter of the mended hearts, but we no longer have that at our cardiac rehab. Sorry. And which do you think about, um, chia or flax, which is better? So they're both whole grains. Um, and you know, if, if chia is healthy, it has the protein, the flax is good, but if you're looking to incorporate the flax to help with your cholesterol, buying the ground flax is a little bit better because that does release a little bit more of the healthier fats, the omegas, it makes the the fiber a little bit easier to, to use. Um, you also want to keep it in the fridge or freezer if you are opting to buy flaxseed because it does keep much longer in the fridge or freezer, but I always, or you can grind it yourself. So a lot of people buy those mini coffee grinders. Um, both are very healthy. How do I eat healthy on a budget? I'm a college student and fast food is so much cheaper. Um, so yeah, so that's hard. So sale shopping, looking for what's on sale. Um, you know, Seasonal trying, produce is usually. You're living um, this, Rachel. So you might be yeah, the yeah. to take and off. I actually just did for um, my rotational whole thing. Um, so yeah, seasonal produce is usually cheaper because it's in abundance. It's actually also more nutritionally beneficial because it's picked at like peak ripeness. Um, then you also have like your canned goods and your frozen fruit. But like we were talking about, if you're getting canned vegetables, you just want to rinse them off because of the sodium content. And then um, if you get canned fruit, you want to make sure it's not in syrup. Um, and then, but other than that, and then the, for the frozen, you want, you don't want to buy like a cream spinach. You want fresh frozen spinach. Those are just some things to look out for. Um, but they do tend to be cheaper and they also last longer. So you're not wasting money on what you're not eating right away. And healthy protein, like eggs are very inexpensive. Um, there it's a healthy protein, um, you know, nuts, legumes are inexpensive. So she, the same person asked, I'm um, going vegetarian, vegan, um, what should you be careful of? So again, you just want that balanced diet, those complementary proteins, um, rice and beans kind of, so all of the proteins that we eat break down to amino acids in our body. And that's how our body uses the, those proteins for so many things for muscle growth, collagen, healing, um, so you want to make sure you get a balance of that. So you want to pick, they call, we call it complementary proteins. So, um, and you want to vary your diet. So it's easy to be like vegan or vegetarian and, and really go overboard on those carbs, but you do want to make sure you get those B vitamins and those healthy proteins. So that's going to be like your legumes, your nuts, your seeds. Um, if you're vegetarian, not vegan eggs, um, and those are very cost friendly. I like lentils. You can get a whole bag of lentils and they're like 99 cents on sale. And you can make lentil soup with it. You can make a cold lentil salad. And that's going to be giving you that protein, those amino acids, that fiber. Ver legumes are very rich in fiber. And that's a big component of the Mediterranean diet. And Any then other? also, if you're vegan, um, a good thing to watch out for is your B12 because we mainly get that from animal products. So considering that we'd be cutting that out, um, you know, speak with your doctor, but a B12 supplement might be something that you would need to look into. So I think that's all the questions that I'm seeing. Um, so I'm gonna jump in there. We did a program once on um, friendly budget and it was like speaking to this, it wasn't cheaper to buy fast food. Um, it's convenient but it wasn't actually cheaper. So there is, as she said, fresh produce out there now, peppers can be bought, frozen, clean them, dry them, freeze them in your freezer. You just have to do a little prep work. As you said, the lentils, if you made the beans, you can divide things up, make different meals, make your lentil soups, put them in containers and freeze them in your freezer for convenience. So there is ways to shop the supermarket that would be less expensive than doing the fast food. Because fast food now has climbed up quite a bit. That might be another one program I'll dig out for you to look at, Jessica. <laughs> Any other? 
Okay. Are we good, Jonathan? All right. Barring any other additional questions, that was great. Uh, I just want to thank our panel there. Uh, I think it's uh, Jessica, Rachel, Carolyn. Thank you so much uh, for the prep work that you did for this. Uh, just one note regarding the recipes, uh, Rachel, that you were talking yeah. about a little earlier. Could you please send them to me via email? And I will be happy to push those out to the registration list. Yes. Uh, and make sure that everyone gets them. That's a, that is a great, great thing. So um, we will be, uh, I'll be happy to push that out. Uh, yeah, I'll email you, no problem. Terrific. Thank you so much, ladies and Jonathan. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you hopefully for the breast health one on October 26th. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Long Island Community Hospital, for once again being such a terrific community resource for us. Thank you uh, very much, everyone, for your presentation this evening. And thank you, patrons, for uh, joining us. Thank you. Have a Have great a evening, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.